on track now. He's fed a lot and we'll go through that in a bit. I really want to see you. I really want to be with you. I really want to see you a lot, but it takes so long, my lord. Oh, more food. <laughs> Now little Rose is in here, her brother Axel's done. Oh, look at that. Rosie, is it time for your spa day? Hi, welcome to Indira's World again. Now, just so you know that having horses is not as glamorous as it looks, but at to be honest with you, it has the most amazing feeling in here. There's nothing more than being able to care for them and see them go from not so well to well or um, unhappy to happy. But it takes a large crew to get this going. I mean, considering I have three big horses, two ponies, it, I still have a lot of people working over here. Um, my beautiful horses, um, all dressed up for all of you today, and then they will be redressed to go back into their mucky clothes. Because as you know, London weather is not, England weather is not so great, and it's been raining and cold. And each of my horses has their own personality. I can talk you through them. First, of course, this is Tommy, all the way from Tipperary, as are my horses. <laughs> Tommy's mother there, Carmel, and Carmel has come all the way from Tipperary, and there's Shane poking his head out there, who looks after the horses from morning till evening. And um, Aftab came to me years ago, and he was uh, badly injured, and um, also had a lot of eczema and stuff in his tail. He came from Tip Tipperary. Um, he has been seriously underweight in the last few years, and. Um, He's back on track now. He's fed a lot, and we'll go through that in a bit. Tara, also from Tipperary, was hunted very young, and um, she got injured on her legs. So she came to me at the age of three, and I've ridden Tara through the years. I did have a bad accident and cracked a vertebra, so I'm not so ideal. Carmel um, stays with me at the moment. She's been here for a few months, and uh, her son, as I said, works here and uh, she's very hands-on with the animals as well. This is Chan. Uh, Chan was abused as a child very badly and you couldn't even touch his face. And now, now, no, be nice Chan. Well, this is all the cleaning. We muck up the stables every day. We do the feeds, change the waters, groom the horses, clean them up. They have indoor rugs, they have outdoor rugs uh, in the nights. In the winter, they're in in the nights because it's cold. They get into their fleece pajamas, as I call it. And in the daytime, they get into waterproof that they put out. And they get, um, as you can see, even little things like oiling the doors, etc., have to be done. They're silly things, but all part of the farm. The feeds are complicated, and Shane knows that um, Aftab is on painkillers, Missy's on one third painkillers a day, and Aftab on alternatives. He's underweight, so he gets a lot of um, uh, he gets a lot of nuts, barley. He gets a thing called um, beet sugar beet, which we soak overnight, and uh, he's stuffed up with various things, a lot of vitamins and oil. He drinks a cup of oil a day as well. This is the sugar beet and there's linseed for his guts. All of them have very shiny coats because of the linseed. They also get hay nets twice a day and then they graze. So after they've been put out today, they'll come in around dinner time. I feed them again and then they get into their fleece pajamas and go to bed. Um, Tara is overweight off and on, and being a thoroughbred, she needs less food, so she's on just balancers. And uh, just a handful. The balancers are all her vitamins that she needs. Uh, the Shetlands get just carrots because they tend to get fat and they get a thing called laminitis in the spring. So now that the spring grass is coming out, we have to be quite careful. Anything else, if you want to have horses, horses want to be treated like human beings, they want to be loved, cared for, and felt 
that, and a clean environment is good for them as well. It's very important. I keep a lot of uh, what we call snowflakes or wood shavings to make their beds comfortable. So in case they have aches and pains, when they do lie down, they have a nice comfortable bed. We have banks on the side, which is usually the sloping of the beds going up in case they get uh, caught in a back position lying down, then they have to be able to push themselves up because not being in a field, they're in confined spaces. So that can cause a big problem. Um, cleaning of the tack, that's done every few months. T tomorrow's cleaning of the tack day, which is your bridles, your saddles, all the rest of it. Um, in here is the room where we just basically have all the stuff we need, which is at the moment in the process. Of course, all the buckets are washed. I don't like anything dirty because I don't think it's fair to them. The stables are washed out, needless to say, every day. During the spring and summer, we get a lot of horse flies, and that agitates them a lot, and they can get infections as well. So they get horse spray, their nets, they have a fly net that we put on them, and that prevents the flies from getting to them. That's important as well. Um, you're going to be hearing all the sounds in the background, but that's normal. It's important for them to be vaccinated on time, wormed on time. Um, I had a hiccup when my mother was ill a few years ago, and I neglected my horses. And I realize now how important it was to keep to schedules. I, this is my whole morning, and I finish around lunchtime. We have lunch, and then, um, of course, I've got dogs and goats I have to look after. And the hardest thing for me to do is at 4.30 to go for my run, but it's one thing I try and do at least five days a week, is a five to six mile run every evening. Um, and cook, of course, for the farm. And as you can see, it's quite a big family to cook for. But we love it. And the man behind the camera is responsible for helping with most things, even in the house. And the man in the office back there is the one who pays all the bills. God help him <laughs> on that note. <laughs>
And then sometimes the uh, customers, if they're really hairy, um, we'll trim down their feathers, tidy their paws, take all this extra hair off. Yeah, coming close yeah. to the summer, they get a little hotter, I guess. Yeah. So. We, they, these dogs, you would never ever shave them. Yeah. Because it would destroy their coat. Because they have a, a guard coat on the top. Yeah. Underneath. They've got a really thick undercoat. If you shave them, this undercoat isn't attached to this. It oh, is, I see. It's not attached to the skin. It attaches to the top guard coat. Okay. And it needs to come off. If you shave them, they've got nothing to hold on to. So the, the actual coat then compacts and you have a really lot of problems. Their coat, they get coat funk, which is really horribly compacted and they, they lose their, this glossy luxury top coat. So when I get my rakes out later, these are... Oh, they've always been cut really tight. Which really feathers. bothers me, but no, yeah, they should never. I'm we happy can, to know. Trim the feathers and sometimes no, I didn't know. I mean, uh, as a layman, this is something you learn something the new. Big, the big double coated breeds, so okay. like Labradors, anything that's got a double coat, you, you can trim them with scissors, but you generally don't shave them. Yeah. People want them shaved because they think it um, it keeps them cool and it stops them shedding. It doesn't stop them shedding. And these coats are designed for warmth and the air conditioners as well. So in the summer ah. when the wind blows, the Listen gets, to the wind blow. In the summer when the wind blows, the air blows through the coat and it gets trapped and it cools them down. Ah. So they do pant a lot because they're hot, but that's the only way. They sweat through their pores. They're supposed to be crosses between retrievers and Akitas. I haven't yeah. seen any Akita, Akita blood in this one. You'll never ever shave an Akita either. So no, I, they don't have any Akita a, blood, I'm convinced of it, because the they're such sissies. A lot of the work is done with this. Yeah. It's a really high powered, and it gets under and you'll see all the coat will start to fly, all the dead skin going and off with it, yeah. end up completely <laughs> like a ghost, so they're not white, but okay. the tools that I will use on, on the rose. Rosie. So they go in and they pull out undercoat. So you see, that's all. Oh my How goodness me. It it, it'll be much better when she's bar, but this will take out this. This is the undercoat. And that's what causes them problems with matting if they don't get it out because they can't. So at the end of it, it's also called a coat king, so that was also an undercoat rake. And it doesn't take the top coat, so there, it's not taking the, mm -hmm. so it takes the undercoat. And then that's the final and At the end, I should be able to take my coat yeah. through everything. But I won't be able to hear. Oh, I see. There's undercoat there, so once I've been in with these, yeah. Rose, you're going to be a pretty little girl. Do you want face mask? Boom, bum, 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 bum. So that's um, kind of how we're beginning with this and we're going to see her when she's done. Well, thank you. Perfect pause. Perfect pause. Well, that's the end of this part of my day. Now it's just cooking dinner, going to the gym feeding the clan and then go to bed and start another day all over again but uh, till then bye from India at the world and don't forget to like when you see it if you do and uh, subscribe to India as world this is Rosie how pretty am I am I so pretty that note come on mommy is the gym now <laughs>